This year, one of the most anticipated games is Assassin's Creed, and producer Jade Raymond is part of the reason why. Now, for the first time, Jade comes to game trailers to tell all. What was the original vision for Assassin's Creed? The mandate was really redefine action adventure games for the next generation consoles. And what was the biggest challenge the team faced during production? We were trying to create all new gameplay for the first time and like stuff that's never been done before. Pull up your hood and conceal your blade. This is the bonus round. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the bonus round. I'm Jeff Keeley, and welcome to the show where the biggest names in the video game industry get together to talk about the issues that matter most. And one of the most anticipated games of the year is now out. It's Assassin's Creed. And joining me now is Jade Raymond, the producer of the game. Jade, welcome to the bonus round. Thanks, Jeff. How's it going? It's going well. Well, congratulations. Good. You've been Thank working you. on this thing for, what is it, three years now? A little over three years, yeah. Amazing. I mean, this is uh, you know a great game, and I, I've always you know I've been a big fan of the team uh, that did you know Prince of Persia: Sands of Time, Patrice, all those guys that did that game. Kind of rolled onto this thing, and you were new to to Ubisoft coming in, you know, sort of inheriting this team and working on this. Um, tell me, I mean, when you first started working on this game three years ago, what was the vision for what you wanted to do with it? Well, the vision really, it all starts with Patrice, right? Because right. he's the creative director. He um, had read a book called Alamut, which is about the assassins. It's a work of fiction, but it's basically covering, you know, the assassins' myths and the history and stuff. And he thought, we need to turn this into a game. So um, that's the starting point. And then there was a lot of influence, different influences for the um, gameplay, which was kind of sports games and parkour right. and kind of car racing for controls and having crowd, of course, and having freedom to go wherever you want in these huge cities. And this team had done Prince of Persia. Initially, there was some talk initially that it, you, they might do like a next-gen Prince of Persia or something, right? And then it kind of switched into this, right? <laughs> That's another team. <laughs> That's a, no, no, but, there, but I think Patrice at one point wasn't like, well, what would we do for the next gen? Could it be Prince of Persia? And then, you know, it was, so it was always like, let's create a new intellectual property? Well, at first, when I joined the team, they'd been working in a small conception for like a few months and starting to work on the engine. So right. the mandate was really redefine action adventure games for the next generation consoles. And at right. that point, we really didn't know what next generation consoles were and the, like, the, uh, the concept of Assassin's Creed wasn't clear yet. Right. So they were just thinking, next-gen games, it's an assassin, uh, what's it going to be? So you join the team then, and you step into this, and obviously, I mean, you had, you know, you've done a lot of games in your background and produced, I mean, a number of titles for a number of companies. What was the appeal of going to Ubisoft and working on this project? Well, I mean, when you're a producer, you're investing a lot of your time. Well, you know, it's three years, right. and uh, it's a big team, it's a lot of work, and we've all heard about the game industry and how much work you put in. So I really wanted to find a team that had ambitious goals and, you know, really fun people to work with and a lot of talent, and this was the project. I mean, I met Patrice and uh, David and uh, Claude, who's the technical right. director, and I was just like, these guys are great, they have a huge ambition, and I really want to help them make this game. So when you step into it and you, you know, become the producer of this project, what's your role throughout those three years? Because you know, Patrice has a vision, a creative direction. I mean, are you involved creatively in the game? Or are you really more managing the team? Or how does that work? The role of producer at Ubisoft changes a lot throughout development. I mean, at the beginning when I joined, it was a very small team. We had the technology that we we're starting to work on because we built our own engine and tools. But there's also, you know, a small team working on the concept. And then your job is pretty creative because you're just working with all these creative people trying to focus in, uh, you know, get the ideas to be cohesive, pick out, like, the main topics, organizing brainstorms. So it's very creative early stages. And then in pre-production, you start focusing more on the management things, recruiting the right talent because you go for from maybe a team of like eight people to a team of 30 people who can start building stuff out. So you want to get right. you know, the best possible people in each field onto the team, recruiting, um, de-risking stuff. So it turns into more management. And then towards the end, when the team is 150 people, uh, then you also do a lot of external management, like working with the casting agencies and making sure all the voice actors are being booked and all that kind of stuff. So the Assassin's team, it, it grew to what, like 100 plus people? 158 people at peak. Wow, I mean, that's a, it goes from, I mean, when you started on the project, it was what, like 10, 12 like, guys? Yeah, eight people, yeah. Eight people up to 150 people. I mean, you, I mean, you have to recruit those people, bring them on, and manage Integrate that project. Integrate them. <laughs> that's, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, what are, like, the biggest challenges you look back at the past few years? I mean, are there, like, two or three moments that stand out for you as, like, the most difficult times on the project? 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple of things. From a management perspective, it becomes really challenging when you have a team that's uh, 70 people and then you grow past 120. It's like a huge difference between 70, managing a team of 70 people, like all the communication processes that work and stuff like that, to right. when you're managing 120 people where you need a different team structure and you need to like make sure that everyone has the right information. So you need to put like a bit more infrastructure and more procedures in place. Right. So making that transition was um, a big challenge and we had to like kind of rejigger the team and everything uh, to be more efficient. And then I think the other thing is we were trying to create all new gameplay for the first time and like stuff that's never been done before these huge cities where you can climb everywhere and you know 120 different AIs being simulated simultaneously that have crowd interactions and like create new kind of fun out of that and so we were working on a lot of things separately with many teams working on the fight many teams working on the guard AI many teams working on you know just the climbing and they're all working in parallel and I think right. we're all you know having fun with these spots but we're kind of okay how's this all gonna come together and you know how are we tune it and I, that was like until we had this one amazing meeting where it all came together and Patrice played you know this first demo oh, where we had the gameplay loop and the whole team was like super excited and we finally saw okay you know, this is how it looks when it comes together. That was like really the key moment. And how long ago was that? That was maybe a year and a half ago. Wow. Yeah. So then it's just a year and a half of actually executing on that. Yeah, I guess, exactly. And getting to that point yeah, and building can... it out, and you know, doing all of the things. There's so many different steps, like motion capture for all of the crowd. You know, right. the voice acting. There's like so many. Are you mocapped in there? Did you put on the mocap? <laughs> Sometimes we get do professionals that, right? to do that. No, there, are, there actually are a couple guys on the team who do that. Like our animation director Alex Drouin, who also right. did all of the Prince moves Persia, for yeah. the Prince of Persia. He actually did a lot of the mocap himself. See? There's some good bloopers out of that, Jeff. I think you'd enjoy them. Yeah. We, we, we got to show them on the show there. Now, um, so you, you know, you're working on the game for three years, and a year and a half ago, you've you know sort of get, you know get the core of what the gameplay is going to be. What has the past you know year been like for the team? Because I know you know a lot of people I think were wondering was Assassins really going to come this year? It was sort of like you know it's like. It's so ambitious. Really I know pull there it are off. so many rumors, right? Yeah, <laughs> even a few weeks ago, people were like, "I don't know if it's really coming," and they saw you know certain games slipping, and they're like, and then you know all of a sudden it's gold. I mean, yeah. was it really? I mean, intense to get this done for this November? It's always intense to get right. things done. I mean, that's why we love making games, right? Because like it's challenging and it's all new stuff, and like there's huge teams and everyone's working together and it's creative. So yeah, it was super exciting last year. And no worse for the wear, though. Right? Oh, thank you. All you right. can't see the bags. <laughs> never, never any bags. All right, well, when we come back, we're going to talk to Jade more about Assassin's Creed, which you can get right now on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Next time on the bonus round, more with Jade on Assassin's Creed. What was cut out of the final game? There's only one big chunk that we decided not to do that right. I still think would have been great, but we would have been completely insane if we had done it. And what does she make of all the attention she gets on the internet? Maybe it's just weird to have like a woman talking about an action game called Assassins. Those answers and more next time in the bonus round. The bonus round.